We turn off Kremo, so K-Unit is not necessary anymore. So let's... So the Jupyter Notebook allows you... So basically, this is a Python Notebook. Uh, today, I know it's going to be how you how to map reduce with in Python. But the nice thing about the Jupyter Notebook is that you can also execute Linux command within this notebook by prefacing it with an exclamation point. So if you hit exclamation point ls, that should show you the content of your current directory. You have to hit shift and refer to one of the commands. Oh, yeah. Uh, you can have shift enter, alternate enter, or uh, hit this button, the run shell command. So let's see if I want to ls my home directory. It will show me the content of my home directory. And of course, if you don't have the exclamation point, if you just type bring hello world, then it runs as a normal Python uh, shell. So our HDMS cluster is not directly accessible uh, from this location, from one of the external nodes. The way that Hadoop is set up, particularly for CI usage, is that um, there is a single node where, who, where the cloud, um, it contains the command to interact with the Hadoop cluster. But as we are looking at the potential of adding many users onto this Hadoop cluster, we don't want everyone to log onto that single node and try to interact with the Hadoop cluster at the same time. Yes. So what we want to do is the name of the head dog where you can interact with the Hadoop cluster, the user dog, is DSCI user01. And what we do is we send a Hadoop command via SSH to this user node, and it will forward that command to the cluster. So if you type exclamation point SSH ESCI U001, and then you type HDFS, this is almost the same as you are executing that command from ESCI U001. I forgot to mention also that we have a dedicated user node. So three master nodes, um, 16 plus 24 worker nodes, and then uh, this dedicated user node which the users will interact with. <coughs> So, HDFS is a file system, but it doesn't lie directly on top of the hardware like a Linux file system. Um, basically, HDFS lies as an additional layer of middleware on, on your standard file system. All of the, the data within um, Hadoop HDFS is still being stored in the Linux file system as block of data. Uh, we will not go into that level of detail today. But what HDFS is, it contains the metadata and it contains the location of this block so that you can interact with the data as if they were standard uh, Linux file system. So you can see here the first, the primary command to interact with HDFS is the HDFS command itself. And it contains a number of subcommands. Uh, you can do HDFS class class to figure out where the configuration are stored. Um, don't run this ever. Um, all of this allows you to spawn the corresponding processes on each of the worker node to handle the metadata and the actual data. Uh, run the administrative command, run the file checking utility. Uh, for, for what you are doing with the research world, the only thing that you really need to look at is the HDFS, DFS command, and maybe the FSCK command. So, again, SSH, the SCIU, 
HTFS, DFS. Um, ignore that message. It'll probably disappear at some point. Yep. <laughs> yes. Uh, better. So there's a discrepancy here, and I blame a little developer, uh, particularly those who write documentation. HTFS DFS is the new command, I think, starting from Hadoop 2.0-ish. Um, you can still use Hadoop FS to interact with the Hadoop cluster. I would not recommend it. Just go ahead and then use the HTFS DFS. So basically, what, is, what does the FS mean is we are talking to the Hadoop file system. We want to do file system comments, and the command after that is what you can do. So you can actually see that there are many commands which is very similar to the Linux file system command. So you can cat a file, you can do checksum. You also have some administrative command, for example, how to change group, how to change the read write option, set the order, copy from local, copy to local, and put and get. This is a command that lets you move a data set or file from a standard Linux file system into HDFS or get a file from HDFF out to the Linux file system. Uh, create a snapshot for backup. Uh, the FPU is to get the file size. Uh, and so on. So many of this, you can also move data, um, remove, remove directory, Read only the end portion of the data, uh, data set to the top, and so on. So, there are some also additional generic options. Um, if you're interested, you can read more about this. I have not seen the need when I was using Hadoop MapReduce to really use the generic options. <coughs> 